Thank you, Mr. Guha. Now, I'm throwing the meeting open to your questions. Please identify yourself and say which members of the panel you are addressing your question to. And please, oh, please also genuine questions, not speeches. Go ahead. Is it moving? Microphone. Right. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, no, no. I am a member of uh, British Azerbaijan Society. I would like to ask uh, one simple question from uh, Dr. Walsh and a uh, couple of facts which I would like to hear the panel's opinion about it for the future. Uh, first of all, I couldn't agree more with Dr. Walsh was that uh, events of the 1905-1915 was the sort of circumstances and that both parties were the actors of the situation. But I wouldn't agree the recent genocide of Khojala people by the Armenian, it wasn't sort of uh, actors of the circumstances. They did on purpose and their leaders uh, President uh, um, Sarkisyan and the previous uh, uh, pre uh, president of Armenia, Kocharyan, is still freely elected. They are ruling the country and uh, they have their eyes on not only Karabakh but also seven further um, states of Azerbaijan. And uh, we know that the first Armenian arrived in Karabakh was from Maraga in southern Azerbaijan, and they erected um, uh, 150 so years ago, is? and they erected a, a monument for the 150th anniversary of first Armenian of Karabakh. Then they actually destroyed it. Now they claim Karabakh was before Jesus. The and the, my, and the, just I'm making short. And another uh, uh, actually genocide is brewing is within Iran, which Armenia is trying to get uh, land between Armenia and Turkey in southern Azerbaijan, and also a railway is being uh, um, constructed from Armenia to Gulf, which is causing problem for the future. I would like your opinion about that. Thank you very much. Questions? Oh, there's a question. Right. My question was that uh, the genocide of Russia, it wasn't a sort of access. Sorry. What's your question? Um, just, just, uh, uh, the use of the word actor I used at the start, really, what I was trying to get over there really was the fact that um, sometimes conflicts are seen between, for instance, Armenians and Turks, like, for instance, in Northern Ireland, the conflict is sometimes portrayed in the media between Catholics and Protestants, but they are, in a sense, they are part of a wider thing, and there are other people outside that are, are probably more guilty, in a sense, uh, having imposed the, 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 the overall uh, story on, on, on the situation. And that's really what I was trying to, trying to say. Of course, um, there are groups within uh, these, these, these groups that, are, that have responsibility for what they do in those situations. I, I totally agree with that. But really, the, the, the focus of my speech was really to try and show that there was an overall context. And maybe that's a way of uh, improving uh, relations because it, uh, it doesn't uh, lead to people blaming each other and it sees uh, uh, people as victims of within a, a, an overall uh, a conflict in which there was victims all over the world. And that's really what the sort of point I was trying to make. Really. Thank you. More questions? Yes. So, um, if I may, I could um, I would like to ask two questions. I would like to ask a question no, to... My name is... Um, Arshak Mukherjee, and um, I would like to ask a question to uh, Mr. 
Gawain and Gwen. Gwen and Dr. Walsh as well. Not easy to pronounce. Okay. Um, uh, the question with regards to your speech, uh, Mr. Gwen, um, your speech was titled uh, Armenian Terrorism and Propaganda since 1972. Indeed. Um, you must be aware that there have been no terrorist attacks by Assala since 1984 and there are no Armenian terrorist organizations in existence and the, the conference is called Turkish-Armenian Relations. I, I wonder how a non-existent terrorist threat is now affecting Turkish-Armenian relations. That's a question to you. And um, a question uh, to Dr. Walsh. Um, Dr. Walsh, you, um, you're saying that, uh, as the gentleman here mentioned, um, that you see the events that occurred in Western Armenia in 1915 as um, something that was committed mutually by two communities um, and as a result of uh, an Armenian revolt. Um, and you mentioned two revolts in Zeytun and in Van. Um, the Armenian population that lived in Turkey was deported, moved and slaughtered from all regions uh, in Armenia. Uh, um, and may I finish, please? Um, and most of, the, most, of the, most of the people who were de uh, deported and slaughtered were not, uh, were not uh, revolting and none of them had any intention to, to fight the Turkish state. Um, how, the question is, how do you put uh, an equal sign between that, a revolt by small groups of a largely, as you said, uh, population that was um, living uh, in peace with their neighbors, a small part, and slaughtering majority of that population. Thank you very much. Right. Of course. At first, I would like to thank uh, this participant for his question. I had to summarize the end of my presentation, and I am only responsible for this. That's why this question was raised. First, you say that the last Asala attack to took place in 1984. I'm sorry, the last Asala attack took place in 1997 in Brussels. A bomb exploded in front of the Turkish embassy. <laughs> the last assassination attempt by Asala took place in December 1991 against Hungary. Regardless, it's not the most important aspect of the reply to your question. I could not say, uh, because I had to be short, that in 1985-1986, when the Dashnak Congress decided to suspend the terrorist activities, they did not decide it only. They decided that the specialists in explosive would be sent not at all to the civil life, but to the PKK camps. And as far as I know, the PKK activities exist until today. Secondly, with the permission of Mr. Walsh, I would like to start to reply to your question, which, well, second question, which is a very interesting question, even if, of course, I am, do not exactly agree with your view. But there is something very true in your question, too, in the sense that the revolt of Van, the revolt of Zaytun, and the landing in Gallipoli are not the single reason for the Armenian relocation. There are other reasons on a purely strategic level. In the sense that in, on May 2, 1915, there is a letter of Enver Pasha to Talat Bey, then Talat Pasha, saying we should expel the Armenians around the lake of Van. There is no mention about Armenians in Sivas. The reason why not only Armenians around the lake of Van, Van, Bitlis, etc., and Zaytun were expelled is that is not merely revolts in Van and Zaytun, but the fear which increased during the months of May, the fear that other Armenian revolutionaries in Sivas and other cities, which were active since fall 1914, could use the Van insurrection as a source of inspiration. And I think Pat Walsh will say the more. Just, just, I will finish to reply to your question and I will reply to this objection. The question is also addressed to Dr. Walsh. Yeah. Uh, just, 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 just a few words. Uh, and when you say that most of the Armenians were slaughtered 
I'm sorry, but you will have to include Bogos Tubar Pasha on the list of Turkish propagandists, because according to his letter sent to the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs in December 1918, he says that 700,000 Armenians were relocated and 300,000 died. 300,000 died, this is a great tragedy, I definitely agree. But Russian relocated 300,000 Armenians, and according to Mr. Ovanissian, the half died without any massacre. So definitely Armenians were killed, but the majority simply perished by starvation and epidemics. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, a, just a word. Uh, regarding the Greek, no, me just, no, me, you, you said about the Greeks. Regarding the Greeks, I suggest you the article, the article of Stefan Gerasimos, who, as his name indicates, is of Greek heritage. You will find reply to that question. Thank you. <laughs> um, there was part of my talk I couldn't really finish because it was too long, and it was really about you know starvation blockades and the the road of uh, the role of uh, of, uh, of uh, you know um, illnesses within those. Um, and I was going to go into the the, the casualties and, and the causes of death, but obviously this had a big uh, effect on the whole situation. And this this was a British weapon of war, starvation. It was used everywhere. It was used in Ireland. It was the first place they used it. They uh, uh, we. Yeah, well, I understand what you're sort of saying then. Well, I'll, I'll come to the other thing, but essentially, you know, the, 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 this level of casualties thing, I'll, I'll leave that argument then, but essentially I'll say, if you, there's two ways of looking at this at the end of the day. What is this, the, the genocide thing? I mean, it obviously is an attempt to, to, to implicate Turkey with the thing that Hitler did, you know. So is the situation, from my point of view, the, the question is this, is the situation comparable to that? Or is it comparable, what I think is more comparable to is what happened in Eastern Europe in the Second World War, where people, where state authority starts collapsing, people start killing each other, groups on either side start engaging in, 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 in massacres and, and, and things like that. I mean, it's much closer to that side. I can't say whether the Turks were uh, able to distinguish between the people, that, one person in a village that was a, a threat to them and another person who wasn't. They tried to lo relocate people. Um, that was the, the method of, of dealing with these situations at that time. But what I, all I can say is that, that it's closest to that situation that was in Eastern Europe in 1945, with state authority collapsing, than the genocide thing, which, which is, is explicitly it's, it's to link the, what happened in 1915 with what happened to the Jews in, uh, under Hitler, which is uh, plainly uh, has no uh, parallels with that. <laughs> Right. Excuse me. Here first. On the right. Excuse me. In English. Efendim hepinize çok teşekkür ederim. Hazırlayanlara da çok teşekkür ederim. I thank you all of you. It has been very inspiring, very informing. Thank you very much. I also thank you to the uh, Federation members who arranged this talk for us. What I want to talk is, a few years ago, in Tate Modern, there was an exhibition. An uh, um, Armenian man, a painter, had some... Uh, uh, Ashir Gorky. There was, in this exhibition, there was a tape playing. I listened to that. And he said, Ashir Gorky was 11 years old when he left Anatolia and went to Russia with his mother. His father was in America, and then later they went to America. Ashir Gorky, when he's in America, changed his name to Ashir Gorky. It wasn't uh, Ashir Gorky. Take a Russian name and never, ever spoken to Armenians. I think there's uh, some reason 
what he did. I know, but I like to know why he never spoken to uh, another Armenian, why he changed his name. I'm here 51 years, I didn't change my name. Who do you address this question to? What, what sorry? Uh, whom are you asking? A question, I have? want to know why he behaved like that. What could be the reason? But I, if, if you like, I, I want to say that he was 11 years old. He knew what was going on. When he went to America, when I, he sees other people, he didn't want to involve in these lies. That's why he changed his name. And that's why he didn't want to speak to another Armenian, because he was a very uh, honest, decent person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of somebody who is dead, but thank you for your information. Uh, sorry, gentleman on the, on the right, right here, gentleman on the right. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the people that, that organised this conference. Uh, it's been very, very interesting. I'm not Turkish. I'm not Armenian. I'm British. Although I have a wonderful Turkish wife. My question really is, is the point is that we should move on. There is no silver bullet to this, these disputes. But I feel that Ataturk, Ataturk in all his wisdom, showed the way in one, in, in one particular aspect. And that was the secular state. Because there is an elephant in the room. And the elephant is religion. Religion. The, the different religions between the parties. And we must get away from that. And I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask my question is to Dr. Mango, a very wise and experienced person. Surely, the secular state, we move away from this conflict throughout centuries that have absolutely the burden that we bear and move towards getting away from religion, that conflict. Thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in the back, in the back, in the back. Um, my question is to Dr. Walsh. Um, I'd like to bring the older attention from 1915 to today, 2013. Um, um, as we all know, last 10 years, um, this Armenian um, the problem, or Armenian genocide in bracket, is um, uh, becoming so intensively um, uh, brought to uh, people's attention and um, used as a, um, a, a pressure on Turkey. Um, I'd like to ask um, Dr. Well, what he thinks, um, why from Canada to uh, Lithuania all the countries is very keen to um, put in an um, Armenian genocide, why the champion of the Armenian genocide um, things happened in 1915. Um, I'm really wondering what is this? Or secondly, is this First World War still carrying on? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I think I think what you're asking me was why I was in. Were you in, asking why I was interested in this at all? Firstly, was that was one of the was that? I know the word, I would agree with you. The First World War is still carrying. It's still working its way through. Um, that's definitely the case. I mean, we see this in Iraq, Afghanistan. Well, not well, Iraq and Syria certainly. You know, and uh, in other areas of the world as well. Um, certainly. Okay. Um, well, one, one, just I'll answer that other question, which I thought was a question, but because you might be interested, why I'm interested in is I, a few years ago, I, to be honest about this Armenian issue, I tried every way to avoid it, and and uh, because essentially, when I I wrote a book, I, I wrote a book on 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 the Great War, and I came across material on on really the war in the Ottoman Empire. Uh, that I wanted to put it, uh, to get published, but the, and I wanted to to avoid the Armenian issue, but I found I could not avoid it. The problem was it was, it it's so, it, it it was so much part of the propaganda of the First World War, 
that it was impossible not to deal with it. And it was, obviously I looked at things like Wellington House, and et cetera, et cetera. And it was an impossible thing to avoid, to be honest. And I think for a, a Westerner, um, you know, you, uh, you know, there is a, it's an area that, that I, I saw there was so much dispute about it. And I, I wasn't going into the Ottoman archives or anything like that. I did not feel that I was, the only, my interest in it is to do with British policy and essentially the context of the whole thing. And that, that's the, what I, I, I can offer on it, in a sense. But I believe that historians should short, sort this situation out and it, there should be a continual debate, which I know there is going on, and that's what I would, would, would advise, really, you know. Thank you, just one more question. The young gentleman, yeah. Good evening. My name is Kevor Kagoptian. It was good to hear pro-Turkish point of views, but I think it would have been better if you had had the chance to hear a little bit pro-Armenian point of views regarding this issue. My question, I have two questions. The first one for the panel in general. Uh, how do you think this kind of discussions helps, uh, help to improve the relations between Armenia and Turkey and mm -hmm. between the Armenian people and Turkish people? My second mm -hmm. question to Mr. Uh, Gwyn, I believe in impartiality in academic job. Uh, do you think or do you believe that the assassination of Herant Ding a few years ago, it was again kind of a terrorism act? Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, uh, no, no more questions. Time to, thank you, time to close the discussion. And it's a very good question that has just been asked. This meeting is held in memory of a Turkish diplomat killed by Armenian terrorists. One of these diplomats, the late Ambassador Zeki Kudarov, was in Madrid when he had a car in which he was going to travel was attacked. He was not there. His wife was killed. And the Kikunarov then decided to set, to set up a fund for Turkish Armenian reconciliation. So the purpose of this meeting really is to move on. This was the purpose of my introductory remarks. Where are we now? Armenia is being bypassed. Population of Armenia is decreasing because it's become a dead end. The railway being built from Turkey to Azerbaijan bypasses. The gas, the uh, oil pipeline bypasses it. The gas line being built bypasses it. In the, in the meantime, thousands of Armenians are moving to Turkey as illegal workers. Some people say as many as 100,000 because there's no work in Armenia. The purpose of this conference is to make sure that we move forward from this dead end to some sort of resolution which would be to the advantage of all the countries concerned. Now, two problems are stopping it. One is the genocide claim, on which Dr. Walsh has given us excellent information and background. And the other one is the problem of Nagorno-Karabakh. You probably know the problem of Nagorno-Karabakh is being dealt with by something called the Minsk Group of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. That group is co-chaired by the United States, France, and Russia. And Russia. And in fact, Turks say that all three countries are biased in favor of the Armenians. Turkey is a participating country. The Minsk group decided, because it's somewhere a few years back, on what they call the Madrid formula. Under the Madrid formula, there will be a phased solution to the Karabakh, followed by the withdrawal 
when the Armenians occupied the corridor between Karabakh and Armenia and also the surrounding areas. No advance has been made in that direction. So I think all of us want somehow to ease the situation, to promote reconciliation, should emphasize, first of all, the fact of Turkish-Armenian coexistence, the fact that at the base there was considerable desire for peace, and the Turks and Armenians could get on perfectly well together if these questions are somehow or other resolved or relegated to the background. I hope that we've served this purpose, and I hope that other initiatives will follow, and that the hope of my late friend, Nikki Kulerhoff, that every murder, every outrage promotes and does not hinder reconciliation, that hope is realized. Thank you very much. Following this reply, uh, first I welcome the comment about the utility of debates between people presenting various points of view. I just suggest to the person who made this suggestion to make the very same to Armenian nationalists who are trying to prevent any free debate, for instance, in France. <laughs> Secondly, uh, regarding the Armenian Turkish relation, just to reply on my presentation, uh, I finished by saying that as long as it will be fashionable in the Armenian diaspora, I don't say everybody does, but it is fashionable to support terrorism, I see little hope for the Turkish Armenian reconciliation. If you want reconciliation, you have to consider the difficulties. I try to show one of the difficulties. Mm -hmm. And if you, you want re reconciliation, you want to fix the difficulties. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, there was an important question which was asked to me personally. Uh, the assassination of Landink is a terrorist act, definitely. I just want to say that after this terrorist act, there were tens or hundreds of thousands of Turks in Istanbul. After the early bombings, there was not a single Armenian in the Armenian diaspora for a single demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen, our heartfelt gratitude goes to uh, our chair and guest speakers who meticulously sift through all the available historical documents and analyze the historical events to establish the facts in this hotly debated issue. We as the organizing committee wish to promote a mutual and unbiased understanding of the issues through independent academic debate and would like to thank you all for your contributions. I would uh, also like to thank our organizing committee, uh, Mrs. Bettel Nelson, Jarez Wales, Eje Clark, Alitekin Atalar, Behbi Balakaya, Jazmet Imre, and uh, Nesrin Hanım, Zelda Hanım, Dilek ve Esengül uh, Hanım. Uh, and in particular, uh, to uh, Mrs. Servet Hassan, who coordinated all the conference activities. <laughs> And, and she, did an, she did an excellent job. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to remind you that uh, we need to vacate this room uh, quite quickly and in an orderly fashion, and the cloakroom is closing at 9.15. So please uh, don't, collect to, uh, don't forget to collect your bags and hope to see you at our next event. Thank you all.